What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Agent, and I'm back once again to drop you guys another great video from your boy. Today, we'll be talking about some of the latest news and updates from none other than my Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, it's been a little over a month since the season ended. I talked about that last, last victory that we had in the regular season finale. Um, didn't make the playoffs. Like I said, there's a lot of things that have happened since this time again. There's a lot of things that are going to come up soon once again as this offseason is about to get ready to kick in because the Super Bowl is coming up this coming Sunday between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles. But let's get a little quick stiller news in while we have the time. I just want to give you guys an update. Hey, for one, Matt Canada was decided to be retained as the offensive coordinator. I believe he has one year remaining on his contract, and Mike Tomlin usually is loyal to the guys. He doesn't really let them go, and I guess he's going to have one more year to develop and, and and get this offense going with Kenny Pickett and George Pickens and Deontay Johnson and Pat Firemove and whoever we bring in in free agency in the draft. So we'll see what happens. But a lot of Steelers fans weren't happy with it. I wasn't happy with it, but I can honestly say I'm not surprised. Like I said before, I would not be surprised if he decides they decide to keep him. This offense does need to get better. We un we averaged under 20 points, and that cannot happen again coming into next season. But like I said, there is a lot of time in between now and then. So we can see what Omar Khan and Andy White are going to do, how they're going to approach free agency. Um, the, the draft combine is coming up. The senior bowl just passed. So I know Mike Tomlin was there. Um, real quick, in other news, Brian Flores was – was an was assistant line but was a linebackers coach on his staff. He ultimately decides to take the defensive coordinator job in Minnesota, which I think was a great move for Brian. Um, Minnesota ranked last in total yards allowed in the NFL and still made the playoffs. Got knocked out by the Giants, um, at home in, in the wild card round. But that being said, Brian came here. Mike Tomlin gave him an opportunity to rebuild rebuild his resume, and he's gonna take the the first opportunity. I think it'll be good for him. I think he'll turn this Minnesota defense around. In, in no time. Shout out to shout out to him. There's a lot of news with guys, free agencies that we want to talk about. I know Devin, Devin Bush, um, Cam Sutton. There's a lot of guys that like to resign as well. But I, I do believe that Devin Bush will not be back as a Pittsburgh Steeler as his time in Pittsburgh has come to an end. You can see the writing on the wall. In my opinion, now the biggest guy on this on this team that we need to get resigned is Cam Sutton. Now, I know the cap space is all over the place, but the Steelers can make a lot of arrangements to get this done. But I just want to bring those notes. And like I said before, the draft combine is coming up within the next few weeks. So this is going to be very big. The senior bowl just passed. And I've seen Mike Tomlin at the senior bowl. He was he was very much so looking at offensive linemen. He, you know he loves the line play. And as we're going into this offseason, four of the Steelers' biggest needs are corner. Back, as we all know, we need a true number one. Haven't had one since Joe Hayden left. Offensive line, whether that's interior, tackle, um, linebacker for sure, was in, we all know has not been the same since Ryan Shazier had to end his career prematurely. And we have not recovered since then. We've tried the pass with Joe Shervers, the Miles Jacks, Robert Spillane, the Devin Bush, just has not worked. And interior defensive line. And this is because Cam Hayward is getting older. The Marvin Leo is still developing, but we need to get this replenished and add some depth. Like you see the Eagles running six, seven deep going to the Super Bowl against Pat Mahomes and company. But I decided I, I want to give you guys I did a four round mock draft that's five picks for the Steelers. They got one in the first, two in the second. One in, the, one in the third and one in the fourth. I just wanted to give you a couple rundown. I'll, hard, I'll put it up bro. on the screen so you guys can look it as well. Hard, but let's go over that real quick. This will be my 1.0. This is all before the, before the the after the senior bowl, before the combine. A lot will change in between there. Free agency is going to happen. So this will definitely change for sure because we'll see how the Steelers want to attack free agency. But let's get into it. At round one, pick 17, the Pittsburgh Steelers to side – Decide to finally once again go to their weak spot as they have seen the drafting, and that is cornerback, and that is one Christian Gonzalez, cornerback out of Oregon. He has the the traditional length and size that NFL teams are looking for in a cornerback. 6'2", over 200 pounds, can play the football. I'll get more into it, but I think that's a corner. It was the first on corner who the Steelers can need and develop um, to go along with Cam Sutton. So why not get a corner and maybe hit this time because we haven't hit last time was Artie Burns and it didn't do so well in the first round. But we can make this happen. Now let's jump to to round two, this 32nd pick, although it was almost a first-round pick. But, you know, and that's a 
interior guard Osiris Torrance from Florida, a 2022 All-American, a transfer with Billy Napier to the University of Florida, did not allow a sack. It's over 6'5", 340 pounds, a big guy. Kevin Dotson struggled. James Daniels, I think, handled, did, did pretty solid, but put Osiris Torrance in and, and fill that middle for Kenny and add some talent to this offensive line that we dearly, dearly need. Round three, pick 47. Mozzie Smith, interior defensive lineman from the University of my favorite school, Michigan. I watched this guy play a lot. He's big up there physical. He can clog it up, add some depth, get it going with him and DeMarvin Lill and Cam Cam, Cam Hayward and keep this train rolling. Let's get, let's get younger. Let's let's reload up and let's get this going, man. We we need the defensive help. We, we need to get some cheap guys on contract as well. Round three, pick 80. We decide to go with offensive tackle. That is one Dewan Jones from the from Ohio State University. This is a big man, 6'8, 359 pounds. Needs a little bit of work, but I think he has a lot to work with on the table. We use a big bodied offensive lineman who's hard to get around, who can develop, and I think could be a star. That'll be another upgrade for this offensive line. And now round four, pick 120. That is cornerback Caillou Blue Kelly. From Stanford University, 6'1", over 200 pounds. And like I said, another ideal, ideal size for a cornerback. Get two corners in there, develop them with Cam Sutton. And maybe we keep Levi Wallace, but Akela Witherspoon needs to go. But we need to add some talent in the secondary and get younger, especially at the corner spot. And why not? You can never have enough corners, especially in today's NFL football. And I'm ready for it. That's my 1.0 draft. Things will change. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, there's a lot of things coming up, and I'm ready. Um, Super Bowl's coming up, but I just wanted to get you guys talking about my Steelers real quick. Um, so, Steelers fans, let me know what you think. Um, hey, got a, a lot of long offseason to go, but I will be back later this week to talk about my Super Bowl pick and give you my thoughts and analysis on this. But it's always here we go. Steelers, you know all day, baby. It's your boy Adrian, and I'm out.